What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Big Dog's Gotta Eat Fantasy Football. As always, it's your boy Nicholas here. Today, we're doing rankings, some early rankings. It's April 10th right now. I'm going over my top 30 overall rankings, half point PPR, as always. We have my top 30 rankings next to the ADP of these current players, according to Draft Best Ball app. So this is going to be a really good one. This, this took me a lot of time to prepare, so I think you guys are going to get a lot of value out of this. If you do, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Before we get into it, I have a major announcement announcement to make. I'm already working on the draft guide for this summer. It's the ultimate draft guide. Forget about the magazines that you pick up that are outdated by the time you get them. This is going to be if you bought it last year, you were probably very happy with it. This is going to blow that out of the water. The first edition won't come out until July, and I'm going to put it at a special price right now on my website for you to purchase. It's a pre-order because it's not out yet. If you get it now, you're going to get it at a discount price. July 1st, the price will go up. So this is a completely interactive fantasy football draft guide, meaning everything is online. You can get it right on your phone. You can get it right on your computer. You don't need to bring anything physical. You flip through the pages on it. This will compile all of the content I put out throughout the summer. It will compile my absolute top sleepers. These were guys like Fitzgerald last year. My top busts, guys like Mike Evans last year was in the draft guide. My top 250 overall rankings, positional rankings. So the top 35 quarterbacks, the top 80 running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, kickers, defenses even. Those will be broken down positionally, also by tiers. They will have dynasty rankings, all the rookie rankings. All of these will be updated. All of these rankings will be updated throughout the summer. Each week you will get emailed or the draft guide will change because it's interactive. If you're one of those people that buys a magazine, right, you get it. And by the time your draft comes, that stuff is super outdated. This is a huge solution to that problem. It's going to come with key off-season additions to every single team. It's going to have my BDGE Bible, which is a huge kind of piece I put together that breaks down every single position and a very optimal strategy, regardless of what type of league you're in. So we hit quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and a strategy, an overall strategy for your draft this year. Like I said, it's interactive. So there's going to be videos in that draft guide that do not appear on my YouTube channel. There are going to be blog posts that do not appear on my website. There's literally going to be everything in here. And if there is not, there will be a section listed of my top fantasy football resources for you to use if you can't find it in there. I will list a top 10, my favorite websites, guys to follow, all those kind of things. So you will be able to find anything you need fantasy football related. This is my ultimate draft guide. And I'm super excited to bring it to you guys. I will link it right here. So you can go to my site right now and pre-order it. July 1st, the price will go up. The first edition of the release will come sometime in mid to late July. So if you order it now or prior to July 1st, you will get it at a discounted price as soon as July 1st hits you're gonna have to pay up a little more but I promise you the value you'll get out of this you can use it in all of your leagues you can use it throughout the summer throw the money down now and you will forget that you even did it by the time it releases there's gonna be a ton more that I didn't even mention in this video already but I, I promise you it's gonna be awesome so please if you support the brand go cop that and you will not be disappointed I promise I'll put the direct link down below too if you want to pre-order now thank you but let's get into the video All right, so I'm going to throw my rankings up and they'll probably be up here for the large majority of the video. Now, these rankings are obviously pre-NFL draft and these are mid-free agency, so there's still changes to come and they will come throughout the rest of the summer. But again, this is early April, so take it for what it is. I'm not including rookies. Like I'm not going to throw Saquon Barkley in there because we have no idea whose team he's going to be on. If you're going to get mad at me for that, I don't really care. You can go comment on someone else's YouTube video, please. We're going to dive into some of the more questionable ones where my ranking is severely different than the ADPs. We look at the top of the draft. I'm going to start off right at the top between Todd Gurley, Le'Veon Bell. I got Le'Veon Bell first. The people, the people's peoples got Todd Gurley first. I'm fine with that. I would be ecstatic for either of these guys to be my RB1. The thing with Bell is his, his workload is just so impeccable. It's so untouchable compared to the rest of the league, right? He averaged over 27 touches a game last year, as well as 28 touches a game the year prior to that. And he is so heavily involved in the passing game. He is so good at that aspect, right? They have all five offensive linemen returning this year. They got Big Ben back for another year, obviously. When you have 
have weapons like Brown and Juju and even Martavis Bryant as their wide receiver three, the field is so spread out. They can't have guys crowd the line of scrimmage to defend those swing passes when you have to go deep on Brown, when you have to go deep on Martavis Bryant. Bell is just in such a good situation to capitalize, and we know they're giving them 25 touches a minimum. Not to say Gurley is not in a, an amazing spot. Like I said, I love Gurley. He's my number two pick, but I would go Le'Veon Bell personally over Gurley. Now, we're moving down the list a little bit. The next ranking that might pop out to you is DeAndre Hopkins, and that's if you watch my earlier first round mock draft video this summer. I originally had DeAndre Hopkins listed as my sixth overall pick in the mock draft. And let me tell you this, first and foremost, this is 100% a positional thing, not a DeAndre Hopkins thing. I love the dude. He is elite in every sense of the word, fantasy, real life, wide receiver. But I'm just much more bullish on the early round running backs than I am on the wide receivers. I've done enough mock drafts. I've looked at the ADP enough to see that the first few rounds, probably the first two, possibly three rounds of running backs are where all all of the talent is. Wide receivers are the other way around. Running backs are very top loaded. Wide receivers have a ton of depth in fantasy this year. After pick 30, you're looking at running backs like Jay Ajayi, Kenyon Drake, Alex Collins, Carlos Hyde, all guys definitely with good upside. Great upside, some of them, but very questionable compared to the upper echelon running backs. When, when you can get a guy like Devonta Freeman in the second round, you feel a lot better with him as your RB1 or RB2 than you do with a guy like Carlos Hyde. Where after pick 30, you're still able to get receivers like Doug Baldwin, Josh Gordon, Stefan Diggs, Juju Smith-Schuster, Golden Tate, Larry Fitzgerald, guys you feel way safer with. So that's the main reason why, you know, that's what I'm talking about when I mean a positional thing. I want my running backs early, so therefore I will gladly take a Leonard Fournette or a Kareem Hunt over a DeAndre Hopkins in the early round because I know that there's plenty of depth at wide receiver going forward in the draft. Also, I want you to take a look at this chart. I put this on my Instagram earlier this year. If you're not following me there, the link will be in the description. I'm always giving out value. This is from my uh, Wild Stat Wednesday. So if you look at what this chart says, says is it takes the top five fantasy running backs and the top five fantasy wide receivers. And this is their average total fantasy points on the year, half point PPR. So the last year, the average top five running back finished with 290 fantasy points, while the average top five wide receiver finished with 232. Huge discrepancy there. And as you can see, historically, the top running backs, the elite running backs are far more valuable overall points wise than wide receivers. The only year that that flip flop was 2015. Obviously, that was an outlier of a year. That's what led to that whole zero running back theory for that year. And obviously, if you went, if you did that, if you went against running backs in the first couple of rounds, you didn't win your league because that was the year that David Johnson blew up and all those guys blew up. So we're looking historically, early running backs are much more valuable overall on a points wise basis than wide receivers. So you're picking in the top 10 and you're picking a top five running back or a top five wide receiver. Obviously, Antonio Brown's an outlier. He's going to give you 17, 18 fantasy points a game, but I would rather have a guy like Kareem Hunt or Leonard Fournette than DeAndre Hopkins because you just look on a week to week basis. Yes, DeAndre Hopkins will get eight to 11 targets and he'll probably catch the majority of them, but you know, on a week to week basis, you're never going to bet against the Kareem Hunt or, or Leonard Fournette scoring a touchdown, right? Realistically, they're not going to score 16 touchdowns, but on a week to week basis, you would never put your money on them not scoring. The opportunities are much more plentiful and you see running backs get more and more involved in the passing game. So we'll keep moving down the list outside of my top 10. Devontae Adams ranked 14th for me. His draft ADP is 29. And I feel like that's going to push down pretty heavily throughout the summer as people get more and more in touch with the the reality that he's the number one wide receiver in Green Bay, I don't really think I have to argue that. I think outside of that top tier of wide receivers, he is easily the safest guy there, right? Outside of Antonio Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, there's not someone I feel more confident saying that Devontae Adams is going to finish as a top 10 fantasy wide receiver. Like you love the upside of AJ Green, you love the upside of Mike Evans, but do you really feel that you would put money that they're gonna finish as a top six, seven, eight fantasy wide receiver? You have to feel that way with Devontae Adams because you think about it with Jordy Nelson gone, Aaron Rodgers is a guaranteed 35 touchdowns, 35 passing touchdowns, right? How do you split up that receiving core? How do you look at Devonta Adams, Jimmy Graham, Randall Cobb, Geronimo Allison maybe, like their running backs? How is Adams almost not a locked loaded double digit touchdown guy? He's not, you know, he doesn't rack up the yards and doesn't rack up the receptions, but that will come with the volume. And he's, I, I've something I've been preaching this summer is that you shouldn't depend on guys who depend on scoring touchdowns. Like Mike Evans, you see his roller coaster years, right? He's not a guy who racks up yards after the catch. He's not a guy who's going to make 10 yard slants into 50 yard plays. He depends on the touchdown. So if you have a down year in the touchdown category, like he did last year, it's certainly going to hurt your team very heavily 
easily as opposed to a guy like Antonio Brown who's going to make plays regardless of if he scores touchdowns. Devontae Adams, I think, is an exception to this rule. I think he is the one guy who you feel safe about depending on touchdowns with. So, like I said, the number one receiver clear cut in an Aaron Rodgers offense with no real depth behind him. I love Devontae Adams at 14. Honestly, would probably think about moving into the top 12. While speaking on this kind of second tier of wide receivers, look at AJ Green and Julio Jones. And I actually have AJ Green ranked ahead of Julio Jones, all the way down to 18, 19. Now, a lot of people are gonna say that's a value there. Uh, I think it's a, a debate worth having between the two. You look at Julio Jones, no one wants the consistency, or I should say the lack thereof, that comes with Julio. He is a nightmare in redraft leagues. He was last year, especially if you had him. One or two like 35 point games are great. It's phenomenal. It's going to win you those leagues. But the fact that you're investing a first or second round draft capital piece into Julio, and he gives you those weeks where it's like seven points, eight points, and the other league members in your league have second round guys like a Melvin Gordon or a Devonta Freeman putting up 15 to 18 points a week consistently, that's going to be the difference between playoff teams and guys who don't make the playoffs. People are still going to be like, oh, they just need to feed Julio the ball more in the red zone, the end zone. I've got news for you people. It happened. Last year, he ranked third among all NFL wide receivers in targets inside the 10-yard line, 11 of them, eighth in red zone targets with 19 of them. What happened? He scored three touchdowns. They were forcing him the ball and it just didn't work. So does that make AJ Green better than him by default? No, I actually really like AJ Green's outlook this year. I'm on the small side of people that actually think Andy Dalton is not the worst quarterback in the NFL, right? I think he's average. I think he is actually an above average quarterback if he has a line in front of him that blocks for him. Listen, last year they got rid of Andrew Whitworth. They got rid of Kevin Zietler in free agency, and that clearly killed them as an offense, as a whole. Running game, receiving game, quarterback play. That dip in performance for Dalton easily explains the dip in performance by A.J. Green. Look at some of these numbers. You're looking back, this is taking into consideration their offensive line as well as A.J. Green's efficiency. Average time to throw last year. Andy Dalton had the least amount of average time to throw of any NFL quarterback. First row is per NFL next-gen stats. 2016, he was better. They, they just started these next-gen stats. So they don't have 2015 and 2014. But you could look at Pro Football Focus, you could look at Football Outsiders. Last year, their line was clearly terrible, and they had been much, much better in the past. You look at A.J. Green's yards per reception, you look at his yards per target, yards per target NFL rank. He was just much better when the team overall had a better offensive line. Now, obviously, the point here is that just because they were a bad offensive line last year doesn't mean that they're going to be good this year, but they're taking steps. They traded Cordy Glenn, their left tackle. So they swapped. I think they took their 12th round, their 12th overall pick, gave it to the Bills for the 21st overall pick. Swap first round picks and I think something else too. But they got Cordy Glenn, left tackle. Cordy Glenn is, okay, so from 2013 to 2015, he played in 48 of 48 games as their starting left tackle. From 2016 through 2017, he missed 15 of a possible 32 game. I understand how big of a problem that is, right? When you look at injury history of guys in the line, he's getting a little bit older. But at his prime or in his prime or when he's healthy, he is among the top left tackles in the league. The big question is obviously, is he going to be healthy? He's projected to be healthy, but we obviously don't know that. All I'm saying is they are taking strides in the right direction. They can go through the summer and Cordy Glenn's healthy. It's a huge boost to this offensive line. I also assume that they understand that this is a problem for them and they'll address the line in the draft through more free agency. I don't know, but they have to address the line because that's the big problem here. If they can do that, Dalton and Green are set up to have very good bounce back years. You look at the rest of the depth chart, right? Where Who else is in the depth chart with Green? John Ross, uh, Brandon LaFell, I think is still there. Tyler Boyd, like they have nothing there that even threatens AJ Green's volume count. And he's averaged, I think I have the stat down here somewhere. Over the last five seasons, AJ Green has averaged 10.6 targets a game. From 2013 to 2017, 10.6 targets a game. And you look at his efficiency, when they have a good offensive line, that's what I think propels A.J. Green. Give him that type of volume with good efficiency or better efficiency than he's had, and I think we're looking at a really good bounce back here. So we're about halfway through the video, and I want to take the time to thank our sponsor for today's video, FantasyJocks.com. They are the supplier, the number one supplier, by far and away, I could attest to this, this is the belt that I use in my big money league. They have fantasy football rings, belts, trophies, draft boards if you guys do live drafts, which I highly suggest you do. They're the number one supplier. If you watch a WWF, same quality material. Really good, 
strong leather, strong metal on the front, gold. They come in different colors. They got silver plated, white leather, all that kind of stuff. Have your league mates chip in five bucks on the buy-in entry fee or 10 bucks for this and you'll have that forever. You know what I mean? Like this is such a cool investment for your league. You guys will take it more seriously. It'll be a lot funner. Fantasyjocks.com. You can use a promo code TAKE10 to use 10% off your order. Trophies, rings, belts, draft boards. Stuff for fantasy baseball too. If you happen to play fantasy baseball, I know that started. They got all of that equipment. So again, Fantasy Jocks, thank you for sponsoring the video. Guys, I'm serious. I've been using this equipment, their draft boards for the last like three, four years now. It's really good stuff. I wouldn't sell you some bullshit that wasn't good. Go check them out. I will link them in the description below. And let's get back to it. I believe we ended on AJ Green. Let's move over to another bangle. I have Joe Mixon here. Now, Joe Mixon is... I have him ranked at 20. He's currently going 33rd off the board per draft. And I don't want to get too far into this because he was one of my top guys in my new sleeper video. I think he's kind of like Todd Gurley last year. The previous season was terrible, but there are definitely brighter days ahead. And in fantasy, volume is absolutely king. You need consistent volume to be a good fantasy running back. And looking at this year, their front office came out at the combine and said Joe Mixon is the unquestioned workhorse there. Jeremy Hill is gone. You know who the goal line back is. You know who the best receiving back is. Yeah, they have a guy named Gio, but Mixon's way better. He's super efficient. He was really, really, really good in the receiving game. All he needed was more work in the run game. Like I said, I think their team is going to be better overall offensively. I think things open up for Mixon, right? He came into the year, we weren't even knowing who was the real number one, how they're going to split carries. Now it's unquestionable who is that guy. Down the stretch last year, we started seeing Mixon before he got hurt. He was getting like 20 touches a game and producing good numbers, getting involved in that passing game. So I think Mixon's a steal all day. He's not just a volume guy. He's super, super talented. If you look back at his film in his college days, he, he does some really awesome stuff. A guy that it's going to get 20 touches a game in the second round, even the third round. Give me that all, all day. And we move over to the mid twenties. And this is where things get interesting for me. And this is where I have that big chunk of just wide receivers, Evans, Baldwin, Thielen, Fitz, Gordon, all of them have wide receiver one upside. You might sit there and say, well, not Larry Fitzgerald. Okay. Well, the, you were probably one of the people last year that said the exact same thing. Except he finished the wide receiver six. So your argument is shot right there. He absolutely has wide receiver one upside in, in his offense and in the situation he's in this year. So shut 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 your face hole about Larry Fitzgerald because he's my boy. John Brown, Jaron Brown are gone. They bring in arguably the league's best short passer, accurate most accurate short passer in Sam Bradford, exactly where Larry Fitzgerald runs his routes. So there's plenty of opportunity to be had even with David Johnson coming back. This is almost, you guys might think I'm crazy for how high I have him ranked, but this is almost identical to where I had him ranked last year. I had him like 25 when everyone else was ranking him, late 50s, early 60s. So I'm not crazy. Y'all are the crazy ones if you disagree. Let's move on to the other wide receivers. Mike Evans, Doug Baldwin, Josh Gordon, Adam Thielen in that group. Here's what I like about Mike Evans, Doug Baldwin, Josh Gordon. They are all the unquestioned wide receiver ones on their team. The reason I have Thielen ranked above Gordon is simply because Gordon's floor is much lower than the other three guys, obviously, and much lower than Adam Thielen's, in my opinion. While Gordon has probably the highest upside, arguably with Mike Evans, there's a lot of different moving parts there. How's the offense going to look with Tyrod Taylor there? Is it going to get in trouble? Like, what's going to happen? You know, there's a lot of question marks there, which is why I have him ranked a little bit lower. Look at Mike Evans, though. There's no doubt that his season was affected by Jameis Winston's injury. But like I mentioned before, that's it's what happens when a wide receiver is too touchdown dependent. These kind of roller coaster seasons are going to happen. So Doug Baldwin is a guy that I think people are going to go back on for, back and forth on a lot this year. And I think I can make a good case for Doug Baldwin. The obvious one here is that Jimmy Graham is gone. Paul Richardson is gone. That opens up two different types of targets for Doug Baldwin. That opens up deep targets. That opens up end zone and red zone targets. So Paul Richardson's average depth of target this year was 15.4. That's 11th in the NFL fell among all wide receivers. And then you look at Jimmy Graham, like I said, there's deep targets based on Paul's a, a, a dot. And then there's the red zone and end zone targets. Jimmy Graham led the NFL among all NFL players in both red zone targets and end zone targets or targets inside the 10, the 10 zone targets. Between the two, Graham and Paul Richardson, they are opening up 37 red zone targets and 21 targets inside the 10 yard line. If you think Dougie ain't getting his share of that, 
you, my friends, are crazy. So he had a down year, but I think a bounce back is absolutely in the cards. You look at this defense. I'm not even going to get really into it, but Sherman, all these guys, they lost in defense this year. They're not going to be a good defense. There are plenty of shootout potential there. So that's why I like Evans. I like Baldwin. I like Gordon too. The floor is lower. Adam Thielen is a higher floor, but not the undoubtable wide receiver one in his offense. And the other thing about Gordon is like, look at the other three wide receivers. If you start your draft off running back, running back, like you have a solid squad right there. If you take Evans, if you take Baldwin, or if you take Thielen, you're fine, right? You're feeling pretty good. You're you're sleeping safe at night about them being your wide receiver one. Maybe you don't absolutely love it, but you don't hate it. If Josh Gordon is your wide receiver one, you're probably a little scared, right? You probably don't feel as confident or as good as you would have if you had one of the other three guys. That's all I'm saying. So to kind of wrap up, the last spot we gave there was to Derrick Henry, and I was very highly debating putting one of the KC playmakers, the Kansas City Chiefs guys, either Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey there. I decided to go with Henry. I feel like I'm gonna push him back, but I also don't wanna make a mistake in pushing away volume, right? Like Derrick Henry is a solid, he's gonna get his 15 touches, and I can't discount that. But dude, Deion, I love, if you follow me at all last year, you know how much I love Deion Lewis, Deion Lou God, they paid him a shitload of money. He is going to be heavily involved in this offense, and it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if those two backs split the touches absolutely dead even down the middle. Given the new offense, the new scheme, the up-tempo that they're going to be playing with, it's Lewis a lot more than Henry. Henry's obviously going to be the goal line back there, and he's going to get his touches, but that's why I have him down where I feel like some people will probably rank him a little bit higher than I would. But overall, I expect the offense to be good. I expect the line to be good. I really like the changes they made this offseason, so should be a pretty good year for Henry. And uh, that's going to that's gonna wrap up the top 30 rankings, my friends. If you enjoyed the video, if you got some value out of it, please give it a thumbs up. Again, the draft guide is up for pre-order on my site right Right now, it is at a discounted price. It will go up on July 1st. Grab it now and you'll forget about the money that you just paid for it. It's going to be awesome, completely interactive. Pull it up on your phone during your draft. Rankings, positional rankings, tiers, sleepers, busts, rookie rankings, dynasty rankings, my Bible, which is a big piece on strategy, overall strategy. It's going to have your top fantasy resources, content that will not be up on YouTube, content that will not be up on the blog, exclusive to the draft guide. So I'm telling you, you're going to get a ton of value out of this. So go check it out. Again, I will link it in the description. That's it for today's video, my friends. So if you want to argue, please leave a comment down below. I would love to dabble a little bit, get in the grit, get in the mutt with y'all. So I'll see y'all uh, next episode, which I think is top 10 quarterback rankings.